your profits today should not have a better luck next time attitude. And you shouldn't give them that out to say better luck next time. No, get it right or simply be quiet. We are told not to despise prophecy, but does that mean not to despise any sort of prophecy? Well, obviously, false prophecy is not what uh, he had in mind. Clearly, we despise false prophecy. Now, the question is, what is true biblical prophecy? What actually is a prophet? Let me say this. Let me go out on a limb. I don't think it's a weak limb to go out on, but let me just say this. I don't think that we have anyone that is in the office of a prophet today. Now, does that mean that we don't have any prophecy? That's not what I mean, because there is a difference between what a prophet is and what prophecy is. Obviously, the difference between a noun and a verb. For example, I can run, but does it make me a runner? Someone can give a prophecy, but maybe not necessarily be a prophet. Then we need to determine also what does it mean to prophesy? Well, first of all, a prophet, whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament, it just simply means someone who does prophesy. And so it's someone who tells, someone who informs, someone who utters or reveals. Now, notice they reveal on behalf of the person who sent them. They do not utter, tell, inform, reveal something for their benefit. They do so for the benefit of God. Now, does that mean that it won't benefit people? Sure. A prophecy can be given to state something that might actually benefit a person, but it's ultimately to, to conform to what God is doing. Also remember this, prophets cannot be wrong. There are those that will tell you that when 1 Corinthians 13 says that there that we, we know in part and we prophesy in part, he is not saying that we get part of it right. His point is that we don't give everything, but what we do give, what we do prophesy must be true. Now, we'll deal with the, the two different types of prophecy in just a second, but it's vitally important to understand that prophets do not get it wrong. You cannot get it wrong and be in the office of a prophet. Now, what that means is uh, you need to access, if you're going to be a person who's going to be in the office of a prophet, there's only two things that's required, two things only. There is no training for a prophet. There is no schools to become a prophet, learn how to be a prophet, or tap into the prophetic. Those things are not biblical. What's required are two things. One, an ear. That is an ear to hear what the Lord has said, and then two, a mouth to say what the Lord has said. That's it. That being the case, there are two types of prophecies, be it in the Hebrew or in the Greek. Uh, the Hebrew is a nabi, which is a prophet, and in the Greek to prophesy is prophetuete. All it simply is, is someone who is either informing, telling, or uttering, or revealing. The issue is, what exactly is a prophecy? Well, a prophecy can be one of two things. It can be a for, F-O-R-E, telling prophecy, or a fourth, F-O-R-T-H, telling prophecy. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is this. Foretelling, F-O-R-E, is telling the future. Fourth, telling, T-H, is telling what is now, or what is, what God has stated. The majority of prophecy in the Bible is foretelling. Unfortunately, today, we have the overwhelming majority of prophecy today is foretelling. In other words, God is going to do this. God is going to do that. The Lord is telling me that there's someone here whose letter is C, someone here whose name is Smith, someone here who has eyebrows and skin, who has blood in their veins. Ridiculous, vague prophecies. Remember, in the, prop, in, in the Bible, prophets do not get it wrong because it's God who is literally speaking to them to give them something to say. Now, does a prophet actually have to hear audibly from God to hear or, or to give a prophecy? No, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but prophets don't get it wrong. We don't have one prophet of God, that's key, in, key importance, one prophet of God who gave something false. There are false prophets, there are lying prophets, there are prophets of Baal who will get things wrong. As a matter of fact, here's the kicker. There are times where even God will use 
the false prophets or the prophets of Baal. As we go through and look at Ezekiel 14 or 1 Kings 13, we see God using and speaking to the mouth, speaking into a, a lying prophet or a false prophet. Why? To test the people. Like in 1 Kings 13, the man of God is told specifically what he's supposed to do. He knows what he's supposed to do from the word of God, but he doesn't. And this lying prophet goes and entices him to come to his house. And what happens? Then the Lord speaks to this false prophet and tells him to tell the man what's going to happen and that he will be killed. Now, the key distinction, the key takeaway from this, whether it be 1 Kings 14, I'm sorry, 1 Kings 13 or Ezekiel 14 or even Jeremiah is this. If you follow a false prophet, if you hear to or listen to what they're saying, God is going to not only deal with them, he's going to deal with that person as well. So it's vitally important that you test these particular prophecies. Notice, though, if you look in places like Jeremiah 14 and Jeremiah 23, you'll see that these prophets are going to give these prophecies about something good. God is doing this. God is going to do that. They tend to prophesy, if not something vague, something that's favorable for you. And they do so in ways that it's difficult for you to actually test because they're going to be gone or this is going to be sometime in the future. The Bible is clear. When God makes a statement, there is no need for us to try to fix it up to say, well, if we look at it in this way, no, what God says, he means what he means, he says, and it's accurate. So when the Bible says don't despise prophecy, he means don't despise true prophecy. Now, prophecy can be a couple things. It can be, again, foretelling or forthtelling. And so the Bible tells us we see prophecy happening, coming upon people. And remember, again, there's a difference between a prophet and a prophecy. Those that are prophesying aren't necessarily prophets. All prophets prophesy, but everyone that prophesies is not a prophet, even today. But Corey, didn't you say that there are no people in the office of a prophet today? I did say that, but I'll explain to you what I mean in just a little bit. Let's go to Acts chapter two, and Peter is explaining what's happening on the day of Pentecost. He says, it shall be in the last days what God says that I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, there's a, there's a little bit of contention as to what is meant by here. Is he speaking of just in the house of Judah and Israel as it's, as it's stated verbatim in the Old Testament? It could be. Or is he stating that he means this for all mankind, that all of them will prophesy? Does he mean all mankind in terms of all the entirety of the body? He certainly doesn't mean all of the all of the world, all of mankind. Or is he just speaking kind of locally re regarding only all of men regarding Israel? Well, do we have any known prophets who are Gentiles? Well, we think about the prophets in the New Testament. There are some prophets in the New Testament, such as Judas and Silas, such as Agabus. Uh, as a matter of fact, even John the Baptist is called a prophet. Jesus is called a prophet. The question is, what do they do? They don't go and act and behave such as a lot of the prophets today, going from one conference to the next conference to the next conference. These itinerant preachers, or in this case, itinerant prophets who even teach how to prophesy, how to tap into the gift. You can't. That is not biblical. Remember, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, 6, do not exceed what is written. We've got people who do that. These prophets today are without question in error in so many ways. We'll cover that even more so. But now, were there prophets in the New Testament? Sure. The prophets of the New Testament were different than the prophets of the Old Testament. In this case, the prophets of the New Testament were for the building up of the church. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, he says, God has appointed in the church first apostles. Now, he's speaking chronologically uh, as well as hierarchy. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles and so forth. Now, one are the verbs, the two are the nouns, the positions and so forth, but who are the prophets? He's not speaking of the Old Testament prophets. He's speaking of these New Testament prophets. We see this again in Ephesians 4. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists. And then the last one, pastor teachers. Why? For the for the equipping of the saints, for the work of, the, of service, to the building up of the body. Now, the question someone's going to say, well, is, is he through giving them? Well, yes, those he's through giving. Here's why. 
all the things that God gave, he's, he didn't have to continuously give. He gave what was needed for the benefit of the church. He says, why? For the equipping of the saints, for the, for the work of service. Well, what, what do we know is there for us to serve for our working? Well, his word and his Holy Spirit. Well, the spirit is, is not contemplated here. That's a given. But his word and the teaching of that is there. What do all of these have in common? What do all of these positions have in common? As a matter of fact, even the giftings that we'll, that we see, uh, what have they been used for? They all have been used to um, announce and to proclaim the word of God. But here, the apostles, what did the apostles do? They declared the word of God. They are the foundation of the church, the prophets, same thing. They What do they do? They utter, they speak, they tell out of, they, out of their mouth what has been revealed from heaven by God to them. Evangelists, what do they do? They literally bring the good news. They, they literally preach. Pastor, teachers, what do they do? These are the shepherd teachers. They keep uh, the safety of the flock while teaching them. And so that's the point. So it would seem weird if they function in a way that's not in keeping with the definition of a prophet. And remember, prophets, the definitions and what they do has not changed. Now, did some prophets have even more ability and a, and a higher calling, you would say, than other prophets? Sure. Someone like an Elijah or an Elisha may have functioned a little bit differently or more uh, in their role as a prophet than other prophets may have done. But their main function is to announce and declare what God is doing. And in that case, at that point in time, since there was no church, they were also used to kind of help to corral and keep the body. However, the body at that point in time decided they didn't want to be led by uh, a prophet or by God. They wanted a king. But that's another story. But the point is, God gave them for a, spe a specific reason to build the body. As a matter of fact, if we go to Ephesians 3, look what he says. Uh, speaking about this mystery of Christ that's been given to these Gentiles and so forth, he says, which in other generations was not made known, speaking about in the past, was not made known to the sons of men. It has now, very important noon, it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets. What's been revealed? This declaration, this establishing of the church given to the Gentiles. And so we have the Jews and the Gentiles. The word has been given to them, which is why we have apostles. Most of the apostles at the, at the beginning were given to uh, the Jews. But then we have someone like Paul, who was an apostle of the Gentiles. We also have generic apostles who were sent by not Jesus person, but by the church. And so we've got these prophets also who are doing the same thing, who are declaring um, to the Gentiles the same thing. Uh, that others would, and that is for the building up, the benefit, uh, the growing of the body. Now, what we don't think about sometimes is this. Why do we have these New Testament prophets? Why prophets uh, if, we, if we already have apostles? Well, they function differently. They didn't have the same authority uh, and they didn't have the same leading. Now, in the Old Testament, you have prophets that would function as kind of what the, the, the combination of the two. The Old Testament prophets were really the equivalent of the New Testament apostles. So what are these prophets for? Well, here's the thing that we don't think about. When the church was founded, what was the church missing? The church was missing something vitally important. They had, obviously, the death, burial, and resurrection, the shed blood. They had redemption through Christ, and they had the Holy Spirit. But there was something vitally important that was missing. What was that? Well, the Word of God. The church did not have a Bible. The church did not have the word of God in full circulation. As a matter of fact, at the founding of the church, there was no New Testament that was written. There was nothing pinned for the New Testament. None of the books were written on the day of Pentecost. So what did they need? They needed one of two things, an apostle or a prophet. Well, what does a prophet do? A prophet reveals, a prophet informs, a prophet tells, a prophet utters. In this case, if it's a prophet of God, what do they inform, tell, utter, or reveal? What thus saith the Lord is. That's the only way that the people in these different locales would get it. Because remember, we do not have enough apostles to go around. And the apostles were maintaining a lot of different things, a lot of order, um, teaching, and so forth. The Lord was still speaking to them. And as these revelations came through, the revelations weren't given to the prophets to tell the people. They were given to the apostles who would be the ones who, who would teach and instruct us. Amen. So that's the whole point of the prophets, which is why the Bible says, Paul tells us 
that the church having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, well, why, how could that be? Well, the prophets, the prophets would, I'm sorry, the apostles would introduce Christ to the church. The prophets would tell and remind the people of the church about Christ, the teachings, what the Lord has said. They would tell, they would inform, they would utter, they would reveal the things of God. And so that point, it is important. Now, again, what we don't want to confuse is a prophet versus someone who prophesies. All prophets prophesy, but all those who prophesy aren't prophets. Now, I said earlier that I don't believe that there are any prophets today. There are no one, there's no one in the office of a prophet. That would bother a lot of people because there are people running around here every day, every week there's a new prophet. There are more prophets than we have uh, days in the year, unfortunately. And I'm not exaggerating. As a matter of fact, we probably have 10 times the number of prophets or 100 times, probably 100 times the number of prophets as there are days in the year. Yet there seems to be no effect on society. As a matter of fact, the more prophets and apostles that we have today, the worse the world has gotten. Imagine that. That seems to speak to the power and the validity of these prophets, but that's for another time. We'll deal with that some other time. But I still say that every last one that at least I have seen is false, which begs the question, if a person claims to be a, pop, a prophet and you believe they're a prophet based on what? Many cases, it's just simply us or someone taking their word because all the other prophets that actually put their name and their face to an actual foretelling prophecy, they've got prophecies that have gone wrong. How many prophecies does it take for a person to be confirmed as a false prophet? How many false prophecies must a person have for us to know that this person has not heard from God? Just one. Uh, why? Because if you have a false prophet, there, the Bible tells us that that person has not spoken or heard from God. Remember the test in the Old Testament and the same now is that is what they said come to pass. If it did not, I don't care if 40% came to pass. I don't care if they got, if they claim, now they claim that they got one right and got Oh, I don't know, five wrong, or even if they are so audacious to say that they've got five right and two wrong. Doesn't matter. The two wrong or the one wrong makes you wrong. I don't care if you were even in the ballpark. God's prophecies are not in the ballpark. They are accurate and they are exact. And so for that reason, we're told to test prophecy. Now we'll get to that in a second, but we're also told to does pursue love, uh, and desire earnestly the things of the spirit. The word, the gift, the word gift is not there. So it's a pneumatica, which is the things of the spirit or the spiritual things. But it's this phrase right here that tells us why, uh, especially that you may prophesy. Well, it's the especially that you may prophesy that for some people can be confusing. How do we know what it really means? Well, just look at the Greek. The Greek says malon dehena prophetuete. Day is the word, but or yet, uh, and now. It could be either one of those. And so now or and or but. Malon henna prophet. Malon is rather or more or rather or can be take, taken as especially. And then here's the phrase. Here's the key part. This henna. The word henna in Greek is a purpose clause. It says the reason why for this reason. This is the reason for or in order that. So all of that he's saying pursue love. Desiring spiritual gifts. Why? What's the point? What's the purpose? In order that you would prophesy. This does not mean that we are prophets because we're already told previously that all are not prophets. So everyone doesn't have that gift to be a prophet, but he wants us all to prophesy. That seems strange. On one hand, you'll say that we should prophesy, you want us to prophesy, but on the other hand, all of us aren't prophets. How could that be? Because there's a distinction between those that prophesy and the prophets. Obviously, prophets prophesy just like runners actually run, but everyone that run is not a runner. Everyone that plays basketball is not a basketball player, but every basketball player plays basketball. Hope I'm not confusing you, but the same with this. All prophets prophesy, but every prophecy or, or everyone that prophesies is not a prophet. However, if you do get one prophecy wrong, if you're prophesying, you are clearly a false prophet. You're not hearing from God. So what does he mean then? in order that you will prophesy, in order that we prophesy. How could that be? Because he's simply stating that we should all do either in order that we would do one of two things. He wants us to pursue love and desire the things of the spirit or desire the spirit. Remember, 
It's not so much the gift of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit is the Spirit. That needs to be understood. That's what this word is saying here. And so, why do we do so? In order that we can either foretell or forthtell. Now, let me say this. Is it possible that a person can give a foretelling, future predicting prophecy? Sure, it's possible. And I'm not opposed to that. What I am opposed to is giving a wink and a nod or ignoring when a person gives a foretelling prophecy and it doesn't come to pass. We have to do much better in holding the line and stating, no, we should not tolerate someone lying or making it up as they go. And then we give them a pass. Oh, all is forgiven. It's OK. Now, we're not the one that's going to punish you, but we just simply don't have to listen to you if you're going to give a false prophecy if you are going to lie on the Lord, remember the Lord values his name and he values his word. And if you don't value it, then we should not value your word. And what ends up happening is they cause people a lot of harm, a lot of destruction. They can mislead people. Remember, and I think people, people don't think about this. We talk about, about prophets a lot. The problem is when we talk about prophets, oftentimes we don't talk about the, the negative side. We don't talk about that there are actually false prophets. Too many people are defending who they think are prophets, but never seem to recognize or acknowledge that there are false prophets. Remember, Peter says, but false prophets also rose among the people. Look what he says, just as there will also be false teachers. So what is Peter doing? He's equating false prophets and false teachers. So one telltale sign of a false prophet is their false teachings. They are one and the same. They are synonymous. But he says they will show up as they were then. They are and they will be in the future. And what does he say they, they'll do? They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even, even going so far as denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves, as well as, by the way, those that follow them. And so the issue is they are going to bring teaching that we should not listen to. Remember, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, 6, do not exceed what is written. Whatever the text says, go with that. So how can a person nowadays be a, uh, or give a prophecy? Well, the prophecy has to be, if it's going to be foretelling, it has to be accurate. What did God say? How do you know he's a false prophet or not sent by God? If what he says doesn't come to pass, but also if what he says doesn't come to pass, if it's, if it's speaking about right now, the indicative, what's a fact, what's happening? If he says that the word says this and it doesn't, he too is a false prophet. He's given false prophecies. He's given a false utterance. But the way we prophesy is by hearing the Lord and saying what he says, whether it's in the future or speaking most commonly a fact that is in the scripture. So now what a person can do in order to prophesy according to 1 Corinthians 14 is that person can give a prophecy, give a forth telling prophecy. Remember, most prophecy in the Bible is not foretelling, but forth telling, speaking of a fact that God has already declared, not a future event. And so can we give a prophecy that relates to the scripture? Sure. As a matter of fact, it should. We are told, we are told by John in 1 John, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God. Do not, do not trust every spirit, but test the the spirit, not test the spirit or try the spirit by the spirit. He just simply says to test to see if they are from God. Well, how can we test the spirit to see if it's from God? Well, a couple things. One, it must, it needs to line up with scripture. It cannot alter or deviate from the text. That would go in, in violation of 1 Corinthians 4, 6. But then also Paul says this in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 29. He says, let two or three prophets speak. And now this is obviously in the in the, uh, the, the the coming together as, as a body in the church and let the others weigh what is said. In other words, let's think about what is said. Well, you should do that. They did that with Paul. When Paul brought something or said something, they went back to search and see if it were so. So if Paul said something, what did they do? They went back and searched the scriptures. What should we do? Search the scriptures. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent for you all can prophesy one by one. So all everyone can do that well, how could that be if everyone didn't have the gift of, of a prophet? Well, he's not speaking about that. He's speaking about giving a revelation, which can simply be just giving a forth-telling revelation. Jesus died on the cross for us. Is that a revelation? Sure. Is that the, the definition of a, of a forth-telling prophecy? It absolutely is. So he says, so that all may learn 
Think about what he says, so that all may learn and be encouraged. The goal of the prophet is to do what? That people can learn, not this God is going to bless you in five days. He's going to allow you to build this business or to write a book or to start this uh, restaurant. No, that's not what he's prophesying for. We don't see prophecies in the Bible where the prophet comes up and says, you're going to have $5,000 uh, in your hand by next week. God is going to bless your bit. We don't see that. What we do see is God doing things for the benefit of his kingdom. Now, he may extend someone's life. We see when uh, Hezekiah is told that, but that's, again, to further what God is doing with the people. So he says, so that they may learn and be all be encouraged. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophet for God is not a God of confusion. Let's continue. So let's drop down to, uh, where do I want to go to? Uh, let's drop down to verse uh, let's go to verse 38. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognizing. So if they're not keeping uh, intact with what Paul is, is teaching here, all of her, all of 1 Corinthians, as a matter of fact, he says that person should not be recognized. So my brethren earnestly desire to prophesy, desire to give a revelation, uh, and do not forbid speaking tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. So how should it be done? Everything should be done the way that it is prescribed in the scriptures. Amen. And so one of the passages we want to look at how we know a prophet is to do things according to the word. Well, when these false prophets and these false teachers ar arose in the past, what did Isaiah said? So in Isaiah 8, 19, when they say to you, consult the mediums and the spiritists who whisper and mutter like we do today, uh, should not a people consult their God? You should consult your God. Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? They absolutely should not. To the law, and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, according to what we have that's written, it is because they have no dawn. In other words, they're not from God. They have no life. They are not living. They are not part of part of what God is doing. And so what should we do? We should avoid those people. And so how should the church respond when a, when a prophet or profess prophet speaks? Judge what said. Weigh it with the scriptures. And also make sure you check the track record because if they've given a false prophecy before, if it's a foretelling false prophecy, a foretelling prophecy, if they've given a false one in the past, they should not be listener honored. And so when you see people, perhaps those that might be on this thumbnail or reference in other videos, these are people that have given false prophecies and we should never listen to them. If they want to read a scripture, fine. If they want to repent and then later read a scripture, fine. But we're not going to take their word as though they're hearing from the Lord. And too many people, unfortunately, too many people are saying kind of flippantly, not even trying to be a prophet, but it will say, I believe the Lord is telling me this. The Lord showed me this. Well, be careful about saying the Lord said this or the Lord told me this or the Lord has guided me this. Be careful because you have to give an account that you are in essence saying God said this. And if God didn't say this and has shown to be false, who are people going to blame? They're going to blame you. They may blame the Lord. They, it may cause them to um, not regard the Lord's offering as false prophets in the Old Testament caused people to disdain the Lord's offering and his service. You don't want to do that. Unfortunately, we've got too many people who do that and don't care and think that they can. That it's just, OK, you know what? Uh, my mistake. I made a mistake. I got that wrong. Better luck next time. Your prophets today should not have a better luck next time attitude. And you shouldn't give them that out to say better luck next time. No, get it right or simply be quiet. You do not have the right, the luxury or the freedom. And you don't have the right to even avoid the wrath of God by saying something, crediting it to God when it's not that God said it. Remember, God did set the standard that that prophet will die. When? Well, it's up to him. How? It's up to him. So I would say this, if you are one of these prophets, if you are calling yourself a prophet, first thing you should do, the first thing you should do if you're calling yourself a prophet is to repent. Stop calling yourself that. Even if you think you legitimately are, if your name is Bobby, Frank, Keith, Earl, Larry, Archie, whatever it is, be Archie, be Bob, be Frank, be Earl, be brother, be, be brother George, be sister uh, Henrietta, be whoever, but take the prophet out. You're trying to use it as a title to get recognition. If you call yourself a prophet, stop it, repent, and then simply rely on the word of God. Amen. Amen.